Uh, my name is Teresa, and um, I have been doing workshop at the Nishigamak Friendship Center uh, for the Art of Healing Circle. Um, so I've been doing for about like 12 years, and I've been asked uh, this evening to faculty um, during a workshop for you guys using brushwork. Um, and we're going to be making brushwork earrings. So I already um, whip one up. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this and how to um, put on the earring hook. Um, so if you guys have your birch bark um, pieces already, So what I do is uh, I begin by taking I begin by taking um, this um, thread and I double knot it at the end. So when you begin, um, you're going to want to work from the back to the front. So you take your needle and you go through the back of your birch bark. So, if you like this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can uh, see Ryan's, um, um, Ryan's page, but he's like my second cameraman, so like you guys can kind of see what I'm kind of doing. Okay, so um, when you begin, we're going to begin by picking up four beads. It could be any color you want. So I'm going to pick up uh, four blues. So I have four blues on my needle. You're going to string your four beads all the way down to your birch bark. You're going to take your needle and you're going to go through the back of the birch bark as close as you can to your first bead. I don't know if you can see that. So your needle is through your birch bark. Pull your needle and your thread all the way through your birch bark until you have like a loop. And you're going to take your needle and you're going to go back up the last two beads. So you're going to go from the bottom to the top with your needle. Okay, 
take your needle and pull on your string. And then your first stitch should look like this. Okay, so then you pick up uh, two more beads. Be careful when you take your needle going through the birch bark because um, you don't want the birch bark to split. Um, when you're putting on your beads, make sure um, that you have like a good um, a kind of like space out your beads. Okay, so this is your third row. Then you're going to take your needle and you're going to go back up those two beads from the bottom to the top. So you're going to be like this. Pull on your needle all the way with your string. Does anybody have any questions so far? Like, I don't want to go too, too fast for you guys. Yeah, we just had a question from Anna, wondering how do you cut the birch bark? Um, and also wondering um, about the layers of the bark, how many? What, what I did was, um, I just took, could this just flat one? So I used a gem for the shape of my birch bark. You take your birch bark and I used my gem and I just traced it with a pencil. So once your pattern that you want to, a shape that you want to do on your birch bark, then cut it out. I just use, um, I just use regular scissors. So I'm just going to cut out like a, a quick shape for you guys. And then you should be able to cut very easily with the birch bark. I try to go with the grains of the birch bark because the birch bark can split easily. Okay, so, um, so when you have your birch bark cut out, um, you're gonna double thread your um, double thread your um, onto your needle. 
um, just put a single knot at the end of your thread. Okay, so once that's done, you're gonna take your needle You're going to go through the back of your birch bark. So let me just uh, do another here. So take your thread. I usually start with an arm length of thread. Take your needle. Mm -hmm. Slide it all the way. Just a single knot at the end of your thread. Take your birch bark. You're going to go through the back of your birch bark with your needle. Pull your needle all the way through. Sure, you have your working thread, and this is what the back looks like. So you pick up four of these. And it could be any color you want. Turn your four beads all the way down to your birch bark. So it's like this. Take your needle and then you're going to go right beside where you just came up with your needle and your thread. Pull on your needle and your thread. So your four, it's okay if your four beads are bunched up like that because you're going to have to go back through the last two. So take your needle and you're going to go back through the last two from the bottom to the top. Pull our needle all the way. So your first, your first, your first two rows are already done. Now don't worry about if your beads are not laying right. Um. It's okay because uh, this is how we all learn. 
So then you can go ahead and you can pick up two more beads. two more beads. String it all the way down. So they fit on top of the last two beads. Take your needle and you're going to go through your first spark. Pull on your needle on your thread. Where your bead kind of sits side by side to each other. Take your needle and you're gonna go back up the two beads. I'm going to pick up two more. So if you want to start a pattern, um, you usually I pick up um, a blue and then I pick up a red. There's my blue and my red. Turn it all the way down so they fit on top of each other. Go through your burst spark. So it will start to take your needle and you're going to go up back through your red bead and your blue. Then you pick up two more beads and then pick up a blue and an orange. String it all the way down. Go through your birch bark. your needle and you're going to go back up from the to orange to the blue bead. Nice. Very nice. Good job. Thank you.
Okay, is anybody stuck here? Or is everybody able to follow along? Everybody's there? Everybody's there? Okay. So um, I'm going to continue. So you're going to pull up your working foot. Good job. I'm going to pick up um, a blue and a yellow. Bring it all the way down. Go through your birch bark. Take your needle and you're going to go back up from the bottom to the top. And I'm going to just pick up a blue and a white. So um, when you guys are doing uh, beading around birch bark, uh, don't be afraid to play around with colors. Um, you can experiment with different uh, cuts of beads. Um, I'm using Delicas because Delicas uh, have a nice uniform fit. Um, I have a... These are sea beads. I don't know if you guys can see them. Um, if, if you guys don't know what delicas are, these are delicas. So I usually use size 11s. Okay, so, so this is what your stitch should be looking like. So continue. Um, we're going to pick up a blue and a black. So this is back and I'm just gonna check the shot for a minute. Okay, so uh, when you're working with birch bark, yeah, um, someone said the birch bark split. So just be very careful when you're taking your needle and uh, working with birch bark. Um, because the birch bark can split, um, some people, they uh, soak their birch bark before they begin, um, just to give it more uh, stability. Um, so if your birch bark split, um, just uh, just go ahead and grab another piece and just uh, start over again. So and then you go back from the bottom to the top.
So how is everybody doing? So far, so good. That's so far, I'm so good. good. How about everybody else? Is everybody else? Oh, awesome. Good job. There's my measures. <laughs> nice, yes. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, for those who are having a hard time following along, uh, you're just going to pick up your first your first stitch, you pick up four beads, and you go back um, the last two, and then uh, um, you just continue going all the way around your birth bar, picking up two beads, and going back up the two beads from the bottom to the top. So... Um, here we are, two beads on your needle, string it all the way down, so the two beads are on top of the last two beads that you have strung on, we start. Yes. What are some other, um, sorry, what are some other uh, pieces that you, that you beat? So you, you are really good on beating on birch bark and I know that you've made me a little baby Yoda that I bought at a fair uh, that we had pre-COVID. Um, are there any other types of things that you beat? Uh, uh, Um, I also uh, do tutorials on how to do uh, rope wraps. Lisa, is there any way, like, I know that you have two views. One is Ryan Longblade, it says, and the other one is yours. Um, I don't know why, but we're, I don't hear it now, but there was feedback, like uh, reverberation. It's weird. I don't know. Do you hear it? it your audio is kicking in and out. It's kind of hard to hear. Oh, okay, I'm just saying that when, when you talk, what happens is, uh, I think Ryan Longblade's uh, iPad or tablet picks up also, and it sounds odd. I don't know if anybody else is having an issue with that, if you just want to write that in chat, if you're having a hard time. Is it? Yeah, sorry, I just put the audio on for a second because I thought it might be better, but I shut it back off again. Mm -hmm. That's what the whistling thing was. Oh, okay, because your audio was... Yeah, I guess so, it was feedback. Okay. But I, is the angle okay, though, or should I change up? Just turn it off. No, the angle. Yeah, the angle for that is good? Mm -hmm. You don't have to turn it off. The angle is good. The okay. angle is good? Okay. Uh, yes, um... If you guys came in late, there's another um, 
uh, icon box star under Ryan. And he's like my second cameraman. So if you guys can't follow me on here, maybe you guys can see what I'm doing in Ryan's icon. Um, if that makes any sense, but I'll try my best. Um, if you guys get stuck, don't hesitate to ask me any questions and I'll try my best to um, help each and every one of you guys out. Um, if you guys have any questions, like after um, this tutorial is done, um, you can find me on Facebook under uh, Teresa Lee Marsha Wormagons. And um, you can ask me any questions uh, after today's uh, workshop if you guys get stuck. And I'll be glad to help you guys like on one-on-one -on -one if you guys like. Um, okay, so moving along. Um, so your beads are, should fit like this. So we're going to begin by picking up two more beads. For this particular stitch, uh, working around birch bark, um, we always work within twos. So it's always picking up two beads. And you're going to go back the last two beads that you just put on your uh, needle and your thread. So your two beads should fit on top of the last two beads. Take your needle, you're going to go through your birch bark. Take your time. Uh, take your time. You don't need to rush. Because you don't want to split your uh, birch bark while making your earrings. You take your needle. And you're going to go up the last two beads. So you're always working in two. Two beads. Bring it on top of your last two beads that you put on. Go through your birch bark. It's okay if you see your thread. Um, that's what makes uh, all everybody's bee work unique. Um, I'm using size 11 uh, needles right now. So back through your birch bark. If you find your thread is uh, tangling up a bit, um, you can use uh, beadwax. Uh, beadwax will help condition your thread. 
Um, I use beeswax when I'm doing my beadwork um, to stop fraying and to help condition my thread. Um, you can get like a big block of beeswax from Michael's, I believe for like 30 bucks. Um, they offer have a thing called thread conditioner. You can get that from my uh, eye beads, which is located in Wanapate. For our out of town participants, um, all of these supplies can be purchased at either your local Indigenous craft store, um, and sometimes they have websites available online where you can get it shipped to you. So just quick Google search some of these supplies and maybe you'll find some online. Just a, a personal tip to everyone out there. I'm, I'm currently trying to do this and I pulled a little too hard on my thread and it cut through the birch bark and we had a bead explosion over here. So be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> So I just continued to pick up a, uh, two beads at a time. So what I mean by going through the top to the bottom, so I just put on two beads. And just take your needle and just gonna go through the last two beads from the top to the bottom. Pull on your needle. Do you notice that I'm uh, flipping my work around? I'm just doing that so you guys can see um, what the stitch looks like and what I'm doing. So keep in mind that every beater has um, their own techniques. Um, so find uh, what works best for you. Uh, like I said, don't be shy to play around with uh, different colors. Don't be shy to play around with different beads. Um, you can experiment by adding uh, more beads. Um, you can experiment by, you know, making like, um, you can um, do different designs. Hi, welcome. Annie Bojo, Willow and and this here is Trent. 
Ani Bozo, welcome. Nice to have you back, Willow. Pick up two beers. It's okay if your bees are spaced apart. Um, that's how we all learn. So for those just signing in, we are doing some teardrop earrings with some beading around the edges. Mm -hmm. And there's also the option to cut your own shape. So if you're not interested in doing this teardrop shape, feel free to cut different shapes like some rectangles or some circles and just get real creative with it. Since I'm a bit late, I don't, um, we don't know how to get the um, needle onto the birch bark. Do you think you could help us out with that, please? For sure. Thank you. Um. So here's the birch bark. Um, I'm using size of a needle. Take your beading thread. I usually start with a comfortable length. Okay, just give me one minute here. So string on your uh, thread through your beading needle. Not it at the end. Okay, so take your birch bark. Could be any shape that you want. You take your needle. It's best to work when your birch bark is uh, soak, soak, so like it's easier to work with when your birch bark is nice and fresh. Take your needle and you're going to go through the back of your birch bark, even if you have to give it a little wiggle.
corner needle and your thread. Keep in mind that slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> um, that's what I've been taught. Um, try not to rush your work. Um, take your time. There is no right and there is no wrong way into uh, creating any beadwork. Um, every beadwork is unique, just like each and every one of us. Um, every bead you place is that I place with good intentions. Get creative. So um, for the one that asked me how to string on the needle and the thread, so that's what it should look like, okay? And this is the back. Okay, so to begin, you're gonna pick up four beads. So I got my beads right here. You take your needle and string on four beads. So guys, I'm just showing um, this uh, young uh, this young person here how to begin so what i did was um i just strained my thread onto my needle and i went through my birch bark um through the back there's a knot i just strained on four beads so this is the beginning step of uh beading around birch bark so you got your four beads on your string. Take your needle, and you're gonna go through your birch bark. Give it a little wiggle if you have to. If you find your needle gets stuck while working with birch bark, um, it's good to have a pair of pliers. Um, I find it's easy to pull on your needle. So carefully pull on your thread. Okay, so your bee should look something like this. And that's okay. And what you're gonna do is you take your needle and you're gonna go through the bottom to the top of the last two beads. Then pull on your needle and your working thread all the way to the top. And then your beads should fit side by side together. And then you pick up two more beads. Bring it all the way down your needle and your thread. First on top of, on top of each other. Take your needle, go through your birch bark.
Do you use your fingers so they fit side by side to each other? Take your needle and you're going to go through the bottom to the top. I'm working with cues. Go through your birch bark. Take your needle and go from the bottom to the top of your last two beads. So this is the one I was working on earlier. So um so you guys can continue to um work around your way to your birth bark all the way around. Leave the top piece open because that's where you're going to put your hook. So here's the next step I worked on earlier. back. Okay, so I'm just going to continue showing you guys how to um, continue going. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, the only question I'm seeing in the chat right now is how do you prepare the bark? But I think you, uh, I think you covered that when we were talking about cutting your piece. 
Um, but when there's a curl to your birch bark, so like you can see how mine's kind of waved, waved out a bit. I know some people might have more of a curl. I'm just wondering, would it be better to soak it and lay it, like lay stones on it to make it flat and then have it dry out that way? I'm not sure. Mm
So I recommend for the older people like me to have a magnifying glass so you can bead, no, thread your needle. Because I've been getting Julia to do it for me because I can't. It's impossible. <laughs> oh, a tip though is at the end of your thread when you're going to thread your needle is to nibble on the end of it. <laughs> nibble on the end of your thread and it kind of fans out like that and then you can slide it right into the eye of the needle really easily because it'll be flat. It doesn't work. Me, me and Trin use beeswax to keep the thread from knotting. You run it through like with your thumb down, you run the thread under your thumb onto the beeswax and it keeps it from knotting. Great job, Willow. Is anyone else beating out there with me, Teresa and Willow and Willow's friend? Sorry, I can't remember her name. Trin. Trin. Anyone else out there beating? Oh, it's not Trin. It's not Trin. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So DP <laughs> says she's beating or they're beating. I don't see what she sees, so I'm gonna go to gallery view and check it out. Debbie. Debbie. Awesome. Look at all these different ways. Oh, way to go, guys. So with the stitch, it's like a whip stitch. So you just continuously go behind. Mm -hmm. when you push through and then back up through the two. Willow, I know you have that question in the chat. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're going to continue going all the way around your earring with the stitch that I've been showing you guys for, um, for a bit. Um, so when you get to the top, you're going to leave an opening at the very top of your birth bark. So I'm using the hex. My little handy uh, pair of pliers. You're going to open up the bottom of the hook. Just a little bit. Take your finished earring. Take your eye hook. Take your ear in your eye hook and you're just going to hook it on. My mom thinks it's amazing. Boy! Have a nice! <laughs> and then, um, I just use my pliers and I just clamp down the earring hook.
So all I did was I just took um, an earring hook. Take your pliers. And you're just going to open it just a little bit. You don't have to open it very much. So again, so you're gonna continue. You can continue doing this stitch all the way around your burst bark. And how you get to the very top. And then you're gonna add like a bunch of beads for your hook. Um, what I did was um, the very last uh, two beads, I stringed on eight, and then I went back my very first two beads I started, and I went through my burst part, and then I just tied a knot at the end. So then you take your earring hook, which is already open. Take your finished earring and slide your hook. Ta -da! Um, take your pliers and just clamp it shut. And then you got like some fancy earrings. Ta da, see, see. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue um, finishing this pair up. So, um, let's see. Okay, um, there's a few people that um, are struggling with the first stitch. Are beginning the earring, so I'm gonna show you guys again um, before we run out of time. So you take your birch bark, and take your needle and your thread with the knot at the end. Take your needle and you're gonna go through your birch bark. There's no beads, there's no beads on your needle and thread. You're just taking your needle and you're going to go through the burst bark with your thread with the knot already at the end. Pull on your needle. Ever awesome. <laughs>
So I'm just showing people how to start off the first two um, so people are struggling, so I'm just um just going over it again. So you start off with four beads. Take your needle. You're gonna go through your birch bark as close as you can to your beads. Pull on the string gently. <laughs> Ever awesome. Yeah, I got a knot in here. Oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> So I have a knot in um in my thread. Mm. Oh, there we go.
it's a bit hard for me to do um, the second step, so I did this and made it lay flat. Because I'm job. used to being with Pellin and not birch bark, so this is new for me. So, mm -hmm. and Trin here has never beat it before, so <laughs> it's a new it's thing for both. Very well done. It's very unique. I love it. She me witch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm just I was just showing uh, you guys like how to beat around the birch bark. Um, so you guys can experiment with different patterns. So um, you're gonna continue beating all the way around your birch bark. Leave the top for an opening. Um. So you finish birth 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 earrings. Should look something like this. You're gonna add like a little um, little hook, so you can attach your earring hooks. Your earring hooks should look like this. So um, I already pre-opened mine, and I used um, a pair of pliers. I can open it. Take your finished earring. Oops. Take your finished earring, put it on your hook. Take your pliers and just clamp it. So, um, yeah, so once again, so you work in twos.
anyone else having the best time ever? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like how quiet we are because I think it really means that we're concentrating on the work that we're doing. Um, I know like when I, you can probably see us as we're beating, we're laughing because we're together and, you know, being silly. Um, but I think other people too uh, that are maybe alone can focus. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I meant like that can focus, right? So um, it can be done in groups and, and on your own. And so, yeah, I think this is an excellent a tutorial and uh, with Teresa Wemigwan's Miigwech. You're welcome. Uh, Shane Miigwech for everybody um, for joining in this circle. Um, I try my best to keep things slow because I tend to be a fast beater. Um, the, the beginning stitch is very tricky but with practice you guys will get it eventually um just keep working at it keep practicing um experiment with different colors experiment with different beads um don't be shy um this is your creation this is your chance to uh, create something that is unique everybody's unique and every bee work is unique there is no right and wrong um and Beating is healing. Um, so uh, thank you for having me here tonight. And if there's any questions, uh, I'm here for about another 15 minutes. <laughs> um, you can find me on Facebook under Teresa Lee Wemigan. So if you guys have any further questions, you guys can uh, um, find me on there. Um, so does anybody have any other questions, um, or you guys are okay, uh, cool. ever awesome, well done, I love the colors. So this is the one I was working on. This is my finished project. Doing really good, doing really good. Yeah. Gorgeous. going to share my screen really quick and um, just finish up the little presentation that we had. Um, just a little bit about the project. So the online on the land project that we are currently participating in was funded by the Ontario Indigenous Youth Partnership Project. And this series, so welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, the project is a seven week hybrid series of cultural activities that occur online on Zoom. Um, and they're usually led by elders and traditional knowledge holders, as well as in-person instructions on how to harvest materials respectfully from the land, and as well, um, how to use them, how to use them properly. And the team that we have for the online on the land project is our elder, H. Neil Maneg from Chimnasing First Nation. Uh, there's the program lead, which is myself, Julia Coleman from Mohegan Sagagan First Nation, and our project mentor, Joey Lynn Wabi, also from Mohegan Sagagan. <laughs> um, and then our funder again. So the Ontario Indigenous Youth Partnership Program funds projects like this every single year. Um, 
I will link their website in the chat. Um, but if there are any youth in Ontario that want to put on a project that may be tailored to youth in their area, um, and kind of want to put a project out there, by all means, there'll be another round of grants going out next year. And today we had our sixth session, which is Beating Together with Teresa Wemigwans. And next week is our final session. So we've done seven up to this point. This is six, and next week will be seven. Uh, we'll be doing smudge kits and medicine bag teachings with our elder HDMA. So that'll be next Friday at 6 p.m. And that's it. Um, me, I created a bunch of beading kits for me and my friends to do um, on a Zoom. They look like this. And each packet has 300 beads, 100 of each color of, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, gold, silver, and then gunmetal black. So, we have our Facebook group um, called Online on the Land Online Community, and that's where this recording is going to be available afterwards. And it would be great if our participants could also post pictures of their beadwork on there. So, all of the earrings that you've worked on today, send us a picture on Facebook or by email, and we'll post it up there for you. I'll put the Facebook group link and the Ontario Indigenous Youth Partnership Program link in there. And we just want to share the love. <laughs>